Okay, so uh, welcome to Red Hat Enterprise Linux One. And um, we're talking about Red Hat as an operating system or Linux, uh, Red Hat Linux as an operating system. And for this, uh, we will actually look at around uh, four or five chapters. Um, that is accessing command line, managing files from the command line, creating, viewing, and editing text files, managing local users and groups, controlling access to files, and then lastly, monitoring and managing Linux processes. Now, for this particular type of um, Linux, we are talking about an operating system, which is more similar to Windows operating system. And uh, you must have, I mean, actually ask yourself, what is Linux? Uh, probably for those of you who do not uh, have a clue of what it is. Now, you see, when we talk about uh, what is Linux, uh, Linux itself is actually a critical technology for IT professionals uh, to understand. But in general, we can say that Linux is in widespread use. And uh, if you're using the internet at all, you are probably, or you are probably already interacting with Linux systems in your daily life. Why? Because um, majority of the browsing or the browsers have been, um, I mean, have been incorporated with Linux. So perhaps the most obvious way in which you interact with Linux systems uh, is through browsing the World Wide Web or www, and again using the e-commerce sites to buy and sell products. So, uh, like for example, Jumia. It's actually um, the bucket is made of Linux. And um, we have more advantages because in the modern, um, probably data world, we have, for example, the Linux, we have the Microsoft Windows operating systems, which are actually the major uh, players. And Linux is a growing segment in that space. So some of the many reasons uh, to learn Linux include um, one, it's a window uh, or a Windows user needs to interoperate with Linux. That is, for example, someone who uses Windows operating system, he might um, actually see a need to interoperate with Linux. And then again, you can, you can also able to use uh, Linux in application development. Um, you can also use Linux in cloud computing. We can also use Linux with mobile applications or the internet of things. That means the chances are high that the operating system of your device uses Linux. And then if you are looking for new opportunities in IT again, you can talk about uh, Linux skills because they are actually in high demand. So for that, um, probably you could ask yourself another question like what makes Linux a great operating system? One, Linux is an open source operating system or is an open source software. That means it's freely available. Uh, Linux also provides easy access to a powerful and scriptable command line interface. And then probably lastly, we can say that Linux or Linux is a modular operating system that allows you to easily replace or remove components. So at this point, those are actually um, probably some of the few things we could talk about Red right Hat, um, Enterprise Linux operating system. And of course we have so many other Linux operating system. They are actually called the distributions or distros where you can talk about Red Hat, you talk about uh, CentOS, talk about um, Debian. And then of course we have so many others like uh, Ubuntu, those operating systems. So based on this particular um video tutorial um i want us to have a look at the red hat um operating system because at some point we have some similarities between the red hat operating system with ubuntu um because you see most of them almost uses the same commands so here i want us to see um when we talk about um <clears throat> accessing command line based on Red Hat um, operating system. We have some way of accessing the command line and this actually is the first part that you're being introduced into using what? Red Hat 
operating system. And based on this, you can see that the goal, the goal of using this operating system is, or to, I mean, understanding how you can access the command line is to log into a Linux system and run simple commands using the shell. So we have something called the bash shell. Um, and the objectives of this particular subject is one, you should be in a position to log into a Linux system on a local text console and run simple commands using the shell. You should also be in a position to log into a Linux system using the genome three desktop environment and run commands from a shell prompt in a terminal program. Again, you should also uh, be in a position to save time by using tab completion, command history, and command editing shortcuts to run commands in the bash shell. So these are the objectives. These are actually the objectives of this particular topic. And practically, practically, we will use um, Ubuntu because that can be the same as Red Hat for this particular session. So if you have a Red Hat operating system, you can still run the commands. Now you realize that if you want to use the Linux operating system to execute commands, you must first of all have the what? You must have the terminal or have access to a terminal, which is more similar to a CMD or command line interface. So for this case, we need to understand as far as accessing the command line is concerned, we must get to know how do we access the command line? How do we access the command line using the desktop? And how do we execute commands? So we will measure our part on executing commands or trying to, run, to learn more one or two commands using uh, the terminal. Now, we all know that when it comes to accessing commands, um, you must first of all understand what is a command line because this is just like um, a word that we've been talking about or in other words, you can also refer it to a terminal. Now, a command line is a text-based interface which can be used to input uh, instructions to a computer system. You see, we always get some results from the terminal or from the command line by executing or in the, um, assigning some commands. So we have something called the bash shell. So the Linux command line is provided by a program called the shell. And various options for the shell program have been developed over the years and different users can be configured to use different shells. Most users, however, stick with the current default. Now, the default shell for users in Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the GNU born again shell. It's actually called the bash. That is the default word, the default shell for Red Hat operating system, especially the current one, the one that we're using is called the bash. So what is bash? Bash is an improved version of one of the most successful shells used on Unix Linux systems, the bound shell. So we normally call it a uh, bound, bound shell. Into bracket, you can have a search, which is in reference to that. So when a shell is used interactively, it displays a string when it is writing for a command from the user. And this is called the shell prompt. So whenever you are prompted to enter a command, then you are actually interacting with something called the shell prompt. You see like we have a blinking icon there. And um, we have two types of characters here. We have the dollar sign, and then we have the ash sign. So what does this to mean? When you have, or when you open uh, the terminal, you'll find out that we have the, the dollar sign. The dollar sign actually represents any regular user. So a regular user will always start a shell with the what? With the dollar sign. That is how a regular user will always start a shell. But if you are connected as a root, because you can change it from regular to root or a super user, so the root, that is the ash sign represents what? The super users, the super users account. So I know these are some of the things that we will be able to interact. And by accessing, how do you adjust from one account to another? That is from regular account to super users account or root users account. Now, by default, based on what you're looking at, 
this is purely what? This is actually um, uh, the dollar sign. <clears throat> and this dollar sign actually represents the regular user's account. So if I'm to initiate or execute any command here, then I am executing it as who? I'm actually executing it as a regular user. But how can I change it? Or how can I switch from a regular user to, uh, to a root user? So you have to put SU. SU means what? Switch user and then press enter. So already, if you have the operating system, whether it's Ubuntu, whether it's Red Hat, already you had initiated a root password. So the same same password is what you're going to use. So now if you come and say Ubuntu and press enter, you can see now that the dollar sign has, I mean, the sign has changed from the regular sign to what? To a dollar sign, to a dollar sign. So this is what? This is purely, this is purely um, changing from one account to another. Now, what happens if you want to bring it back? So you have a user. So we will talk about how do we create users. So for this case, I have a user called Red Hat. And I can use that user as a regular user. At the same time, I can get in as a root user or a super user. So if I want to go back to Red Hat, I will just issue SU and then the name Red Hat. So Red Hat is not now the name, is not the operating system, but it's actually a name given to a user. So if you SU space Red Hat and press enter, then you can see that I'm actually uh, back to the, uh, to the dollar sign, which represents the regular users, the regular users sign. So using bash to execute commands can be, uh, can be powerful. And the, the bash shell provides a scripting language that can support automation of tasks. And the shell has additional capabilities that can simplify or make possible operations that are hard to accomplish efficiently with graphical tools. So this is what, this is like a kind of introduction or how do you access the command line? So you have to understand from the user's point of view and also from the two symbols, whether it is the hash sign or is actually the, the dollar sign. Now, we have something called the shell basics and the shell basics are commands entered at the shell prompt. So these commands entered at the shell prompt have three basic parts. One is actually the command. Secondly is the options and thirdly is the arguments. So you see, these are what we call the shell basics, three parts of a command. Now the first one which is a command is mandatory. What is optional is either the options part. That's why it's even given as options. Now the arguments will redirect or give a uh, direction to your command. Now, so what is command? Mm -hmm. Command is just a command to run. Options are meant to adjust the behavior of the command. They are meant to adjust the behavior of the command. And then the arguments, on the other side are typically targets of the command. So what the target or what the command is trying to target are referred to as arguments. The options will only alter the behavior. So let me just give you an example. Now, if you, let's say, um, <clears throat> let's say I want to ls. ls is a command. If you press enter, you can see that we are listing or we are trying to list the contents of this particular directory. Now, what is the default directory for our case? If I put pwd and press enter, you can see that we are operating from this particular folder, which is called Red Hat. So it means that the contents of Red Hat or the contents of this directory after listing is contains all these. So if I list it again, now, so ls is only the command. I have actually used one part of the shell basics. Now, let me just now use the option. So ls is the command. The options is iPhone L. That is the options. If I press enter, you can now see that the behavior has changed. The behavior has now changed from this format to what? To this format. 
And now, if I'm to use now the third one, ls is the command, iPhone l is the options, and then let me put the argument. So the argument, it means that I am interested at looking at one of the folders. So I am using what? I am using desktop. So now if you press enter, you can see now that we are getting like total equals to zero. But in this case, we have the command, we have the option, and then finally we have what? We have the arguments. So this is exactly how these shell basics are defined. So you can, instead of desktop, you can also have videos, templates, but it depends on which folder or which directory are you operating, are you, are you operating from. So in this case, um, we have a lot when it comes to having the introduction or accessing the command line. So you need to learn a lot when it comes to that. For example, uh, you may be asked a question like, what is a shell? You see, a shell, a shell is a term that is used to describe the interpreter that executes commands typed as strings. That is a shell. Is used to describe the interpreter or is an interpreter that executes commands typed as strings. What is a prompt? A prompt is the visual or a prompt actually indicates an interactive shell. And then of course, when you talk about a command, is that clearly the name of a program to run? So we have all those information uh, covered and that is just like a mere introduction to, I mean, how do you access command? Now, so accessing the command in the first place is ensure that you start a terminal or open a terminal and then through the terminal, you have to differentiate between the two users. Are you actually running the commands as a regular user or you are running the commands as a root user? So you must ensure that you understand how to switch a user's account. So again, um, on top of that, we have like, how do we execute commands using the bash shell? Remember now we're using what? So if I want to clear my screen, I'll just say clear. And then I have that. So executing commands means you have to understand the basic command syntax, which is being provided by born again shell. Remember we say that born again shell is the default shell. And it is actually a program that interprets commands typed in by the user. For example, I have ls. This is a command initiated by a user. So I am typing this command. If I press enter, you can see that we are getting results. Now, it is not actually me who is, who, I mean, who, who is trying to bring or I'm trying to bring these results. It is actually the bash shell that is giving me the output. I'm giving the input as the command, but through the born again shell or born again shell, I am getting back the results. So the output is coming from the back end or the bar born again shell, but I'm actually giving the input as ls. So in this case, we have like the first command, um, so if you want to know, let's say, which user are you connected to? We have this command, who am I? Press enter and it will tell you that I am Red Hat. This is how we get now to, to have these commands. Now we have so many other uh, examples, so many commands and they're very simple. If you want to check, let's say, uh, to display the current date and time, just use date, press enter, you can see that we are getting to this uh, date and time and even um, the day, day, I mean, the name of the day, the day of the week. That is date. Now, if you want to change a user's own password, if you want to change a user's own password, for this case, let's assume that I want to change a password for Red Hat. You have to use what? Past WD and then followed by the name of the user, which is Red Hat. If you press enter, you can see that changing password for Red Hat. So current password, and then probably if you type in the password and then press enter, then it will change that password. So for my case, I don't want to change, 
but only to show you which command is best or uh, best for changing commands. I mean, changing passwords for different users. So in this case, um, so passwd is another command. Now coming on the date, we have different ways on how you can alter date. Date will give you that. We have this date, date, then plus, and then percentage, and then small or caps R. Press enter. You can see that I'm only getting the time. I'm only getting the time. And then uh, if I go back to this and give it X, small X, you can see that I'm only getting what? The date. But in this case, you'll find that these are like options. The command is date, but the options is either plus modulus R plus modulus X. So these are what? These are how we can use, we can use these commands. Now, how do you view? Let's say, for example, we have this particular, um, let me change the command. Let's say etc. Now, if I ls, I have actually changed the directory. If I ls or list the contents of etc, you can see that we have a lot of files. And inside this file, we have this particular file here, which is passwd. This one is a configuration file for passwords. So how do I check the contents of password? So to check the contents of password, I need to use what? Cut, and then I'm initiating only uh, the word password. So you see, so if I press enter, I'm actually accessing what? I am accessing the contents of passwd. Now, cut means what? Cut is a command used to check the contents of, of a text file. Cut is a command used to check the contents of a text file. And ls is a command used to check the contents of a directory. So we must have or understand the difference between the two. So cut passability and then um, ls. So for this case, if you press enter, it will display a lot of info. It will display a lot of info. So this is how you do it. This is how you get to know more. Now, in simple terms, in simple terms, cut is a command used to view the contents of a text file. Now, in this case, we also have, uh, you've seen that when it comes to cut past WD, we have so many, so many files. But these files, there are so many. So if I'm, to, if I'm looking for a specific line, then it's going to be a little bit harder for me to get it because why? There are so many lines. So how, is there a way? Is there a way I can view, uh, let's say the last 10 lines or the first 10 lines? Yes. This is with the help of aid, command aid, command aid and command tail. So if I want to get, let's say the first 10 lines, I am going to use aid. If I want to get the last 10 lines of a text file, I need to use T. So if I have, let's say, add pass WD, you see, by default, I am getting how many lines? I'm getting 10 lines by default. Now, if I want to get two, I can just say here, hyphen N and then say two, press enter. You can see that hyphen N is a number. So I am allowed to, after uh, hyphen n, I am allowed to specify the number of lines I want. So if I want three, I can give it like three. So you can see that I'm getting three lines. That is by using head. Now, if I want, let's say the last 10 lines, I will just use tail. So I'll just say pass WD, and I can also get the last 10 lines. If I want the last three lines, I can only alter that by putting hyphen n and then let's say three. So you can see that I am getting, 
I'm getting um, the last three lines. I'm getting the last three lines. So this is how you can display the beginning and end of a file respectively. And by specifying, because by default, these commands, eight, uh, which is aid and tail, display 10 lines of the file, but they both have the option, which is iPhone and option that allows a different number of lines to be specified. So the file to display is passed as an argument to, this, to these commands. And then again, we have the tab completion. You see, as you start preparing or as you are learning or going through the operating system or this operating system or Linux operating system, we normally have some shortcuts and this is in reference to any programming language. So we need to make use of the tab, tab key. So tab key will always do what? So if I want to type, let's say it, I can type H-E-A and then tab, you see it auto completes. If I want to type past WD, no need for me to type the entire thing. I can just type halfway and then tap, uh, press the tab key. It will auto complete. So tab completion allows a user to quickly complete commands or file names after they have typed enough at the prompt to make it unique. So that is what? That is about, um, this is about the, the, the tab completion. And then finally, on accessing the command lines because it's an introduction part, is now to check history. You see now even the way I'm using the tab completion. I want to type history, but I'm typing H-I-S-T and then press tab key. It auto-complete. So if I want to view all or display a list of previously executed commands prefixed with the command number, then I need to execute the command history. So if I press enter, now you can see that all these are commands that we've covered in the first unit of accessing the command, the command line. So this is exactly what we do in the first, this particular chapter, which is accessing the command, the command line. And uh, for this particular part, you will find out that it is actually very easy, especially when accessing the command line. The only thing you need to know is, um, is what? Is actually the names of the commands. Once you have the commands at the tips of your finger, I mean, at the, the tips of your finger, then of course, the flow now will come in automatically. Now, the second part is how do we manage files from the command line? How do we manage? How do we manage files from the command, from the command line? So managing files from the command line um, means what? It's all about understanding. How do we copy? How do we move? How do we create? How do we delete? And how do we organize files? while working from the bash shell, you see? So before we understand how to copy, move, create, delete, and organize files using or while working from the bash shell, we need also to check on the objectives. Like we need to describe how Linux or Linux, or Linux organizes files and the purposes of various directories in the file system hierarchy. Again, we need to specify the location of files relative to the current working directory and by absolute location, determine and change your working directory and list the contents of the directories. Then finally, uh, then come to create, copy, move and remove files and directories. Then make multiple files names reference the same file using add links and symbolics. And then efficiently run commands affecting many files by using pattern matching features of the bash shell. So I will just cover what is so important here, especially uh, describing the Linux um, hierarchy, uh, the file system hierarchy here. And then again, we will now come back to the goal. So at this point, um, we will just try to work on this. So let me just clear. So 
at this point, we need to describe, we need to describe, um, okay, let me just do that. We have to describe Linux file system hierarchy concepts. Now, the first question is, what is file system hierarchy? What is file system hierarchy? File system hierarchy. Now, I know this is not a command. I've actually mistakenly pressed enter or executed. Now, when you talk about file system hierarchy, remember that all files on a Linux system are stored on file systems, which are organized into a single inverted tree of directories known as file system hierarchy. And this tree is inverted because the root of the tree is said to be at the top of the hierarchy and the branches of directories and subdirectories stretch below the root. So in simple terms is that we have some specific system related directories apart from the directories that users come up with. Now we have this particular simple and if I type PWD, PWD means what? Point of working directory. So if I press enter, you can see that we have the forward slash. So the forward slash is a representation of the root user. It is actually a user who has uh, full rights or full privileges. And for this part, you'll find out that anything that comes under that are referred to as the branches now. So now if I do LS, if I type LS just to see the subdirectories under the forward slash, I will just do it, press enter. And you can see now that we have system related what directories. So what happens is we have, for example, the dev, we have the boot, etc, om. All these are what? All these are directories or subdirectories under what? Under the forward slash. So we are referring this as, I mean, the file system hierarchy as an inverted tree. So normally we all know that for a tree, we normally have the, uh, the roots at the bottom and then we have the branches at the top. But for this particular type of hierarchy, we assumed that it looks like an inverted tree where we have the root that is the forward slash at the top and then we have the branches coming at the bottom. So we have the significance of each of this word, each of these directories. For example, we have the forward slash etc. The forward slash etc is a root directory, which basically is used to configure or to store configuration files specific to the system. We have, let's say, forward slash home is our home directory where regular users store their personal data and configuration files. We have, uh, do we have root? Yeah, we have like root here. Root is a home directory for the administrative super user. So is a home directory, uh, I mean, yeah, for the administrative super user, which is a killer root. We also have, uh, do we have TMP? You can see we also have TMP there. This is actually like um, a world writable space for temporary files. So it's actually for temporary files. And then of course we have so many, so many of these. So all these are referred to as what? Branches or sub branches that makes up the Linux file system, file system hierarchy. So you will find out that it is actually very important for you to understand the Linux file system hierarchy. And again, how, 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 how it is or how the flow is. And then now comes, you see, for example, if I have to get into etc if i have to get into etc i will just use what cd and then forward slash etc so you see everything has to start from where everything has to start from the root which is actually the simple forward slash now how do we specify files by names so we have a way on how we can specify files by names and in this case we specify um, the locations of files relative to the current working directory. For example, let me switch to, 
uh, to home. If I want to check the contents of home, you can see that we have all this. So we have like Buka, Obama, Osama, Red Hat, Ubuntu. Now, at this point, you'll find that home is a subdirectory for the root user. So it means that if you want to get to home, you must first of all get connected to the root user or to the forward slash before you get to that. Now, again, let me, um, let me see the Red Hat and then say PWD. You can see now that the path, the path is forward slash, which is actually the root user, and then OM, and then inside OM, we get to Red Hat. So Red Hat is inside a directory called OM, and OM is inside a directory called forward slash, or denoted by the forward slash. So uh, PWD. So here we have something called path. So to specify files by name, we need to use path. Now, what is a path? The path of a file or directory specifies its unique file system location. It specifies its unique file system location. Following a file path traverses one or more named subdirectories delimited by a forward slash until the destination is reached. Directories are also referred to as folders in Linux, contain other files and other subdirectories. They can be referenced in the same manner as, as files. Now here we have two types of um, we have two types of path. We have two types of path. Now we have something called a relative path. We have a relative path. And again, we have absolute path. Now, these are two things. So if I have, let's say I have forward slash, forward slash home, forward slash red hat, forward slash desktop. And then I have what? I have, let's say, um, forward slash desktop. Now you see, for me to get into desktop, I need to start from where? From the root directory, which is actually the forward slash. So the absolute path is a fully qualified name specifying the file's exact location in the file system. It begins at the root directory and specifies each subdirectory that must be traversed to reach the specific files. So every file in a file system has a unique absolute path recognized with a simple rule. A path name with a forward slash as the first character is an absolute path name. Now the rest are referred to as the relative. The rest are referred to as relative. So relative path, this one do not need to start from the root directory. So, this is what, this is exactly what is referred to that. Now, a relative path, on the other hand, identifies a unique file specifying only the path necessary to reach the file from the working directory, from the working directory. So in this case, if I have a file at desktop, no need for me now to present like the whole path. I need only to find what? The forward slash desktop or desktop folder. So this is a relative what? It's a relative path. That is a relative path. Now, something else when it comes to this is navigating path. How do we navigate a path? So we have some commands that can help us navigate a path. And um, one is PWD. You see, if you want to know where you're standing from, if you want to know your current working directory, just use PWD. If you press enter, it will tell you where you are operating from. Now, if you are less, you can see that inside Red Hat, we have all these documents. So if I say CD, then downloads, and then come again and say PWD, now you can see that my path has changed. So it means that I am in a position to know where I am standing from. So LS is another 
command where you can do what? You can also navigate, just to know the contents of that particular directory. So if I do ls because I'm now operating from the download directory, you can see that the directory is empty. Now, if I want to go back, I can actually use something called the cd. So cd is a command used to change the directory. But because I do not have any other directory inside downloads, I can actually show you how to go back one step. So if you want to go back one step, you can say cd. Uh, in this case, let me just put pwd. So how many download, I mean, how many directories are here? Before you get to the root, we have one is download. Secondly is Red Hat, and thirdly is home. So what happens here is that if I want to go one step backward from downloads to Red Hat, I can just say CD space dot dot and press enter. If I come back to say PWD, now you can see where I am operating from. You can see where I am operating. I am operating from. So this means what? It means that I've actually moved one step backward. It means that I've actually moved one step backward. If I want to go another step backward, I can just use cd space dot dot, press enter. If I use pwd, now you can see that I am now at home. But now, if I want to move one step forward, I can now mention what? I can now mention Red Hat, and then let's say desktop. So it means that I am moving two steps forward. Press Enter. If I use PWD again, you can see that I am back to where I was. So CD command is used to change your shells, um, your shells, current working directory. And then probably um, we have a less on that. And then, so that is only to display, to display the commands. So after understanding, after getting a know-how on how to navigate or what is a file system hierarchy in Linux operating system, then it is high time for us now to use what? To know now, how do we copy, move, create, and delete files? So here we are actually at desktop. My operational directory is actually desktop. So if I ls, you can see that the desktop is empty. So I want to play around. So first of all, how do we create a file? So to create a file in Linux, we need to use mkdir. mkdir means what? Mac directory. So mkdir, give a space and say book. So I'm creating a directory called book. Press enter, so no error whatsoever. If I want to confirm, I can confirm by using ls. You see, book. If I want, let's say, to create uh, more than, let's say, book one, then space, book two, space, book three. So how many directories I am able to create at once? There are three directories. Ensure that you separate them with the, with the, with the space. So ensure that if you are to create a directory called book one, ensure that all these words are one. If you separate book and one, then it means that there will be two different what? Folders or directories. So if I press enter, you can see that no errors whatsoever. If I ls, then we have book, 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 book one, book two, and book three. So in this case, um, we've done or we've actually managed to create what directories. Now, how do we create a text file? So text file instead of mkd, we use what touch. So I can touch, let's say text one, text two, text three. So I am touching. So this is, I'm creating a text document, not a directory. So if I press enter, you can see that if I ls, now you can see that we have different colors for directories. 
and we have different colors for text files. So that is about what? Creating, creating files. This is all about creating files. Now, how do we delete files? So if I want to delete these directories, I can say rm, rm for remove, rm for remove, but to remove an empty directory, you have to say m, rmdir, rmdir, that is remove directory, and then you mention the directories. Let's say book one, I want to remove book, I want to remove book one, I want to remove book two, and then I remain with book three. So if I press enter, you can see that no error whatsoever. If I put ls, now you can see that we are remaining with what? With book three. This is removing what? An empty directory. Now for the text files, if I want to remove a text file, instead of using now rmdir, I can use rm. Then I can remove, let's say, text two and then text three. So I am only left with text one. If I ls, now you can see that we have what? We have book three and then we have text one. So that is how to remove what? That is how to remove uh, both empty directories and text files. If for example, your directory has some contents, if for example, your directory has some contents, if you want to remove that directory, you have to put rm hyphen rf and then the name of the directory, whether it is book three, this is how to remove what? This is how to remove a directory that has contents, a directory that has contents. So let me clear. So we are back to that. So that is how to do what? That is how to remove. So the next thing is about copy and move. Copy and move. Now, for this case, I want to copy text one, which is a text file, to what? To book three. I want to copy text file to book three. First of all, let me just create another directory called uh, book four. Yes. So I will, and then let me touch uh, text, text two. Yeah, so this is it. So in this case, I want us to move. First of all, I want us to copy. So copying means what? We are actually moving uh, a copy of a file to a different location. So I want us to move text one, I mean to copy text one and put it where? And put it inside book three. So to copy, I'll just say CP, I'm gonna say text, one to where to book to book three so cp space text one to book three press enter now if you come back and say ls still we have we are having the same thing but now i want to confirm what we have in book three whether we have text one in book three you can see so i have actually listed the contents of book three so we have what? We have text one. So to copy a file, you copy or use the command cp, followed by the name of the file, and then we have what? We have um, the destination, so the source and the destination. Now, to move, move means what? Move, in other words, is all about cutting and renaming. First of all, let's see. Moving, we just use MV and then say text two to where? To book, to book four. So we are moving it to book four. MV, text two, uh, book four. So if I press enter and then come and say LS, now you can see that we've actually or we've successfully uh, get, gotten rid of what? Or eliminated the text. Two. Now let's confirm whether we have it on book four. Now you can see we have what? We have text 
we have text two. We have text two. So this is how to cut paste. It's more like cut paste and then copy paste. CP is used for copy paste. MV is used for cut paste. At the same time, it can be used to, to rename. It can actually be used to, to, remain, to rename. So this is actually like um, a simple mathematics on how you can do that. Now, something else to talk about uh, is actually about making multiple files names reference or making some reference when it comes to what? When it comes to your files. So in this case, we have uh, a less. So for now, you know that if I remove, let's say text one, if I remove text one, So when it comes to, um, now we have the two files. So if I let's, let's say book three, and then ls, let's say book four. Now you can see that in book three, we have text one. In book four, we have text two. So what happens here is that we need to create some links. And these links, always point to a file. Now we have two types of link. We have hard link, and then we have soft link. We have hard link, and then we have soft link. Now, when you talk about the hard link, or when you talk about the soft link at this case, you see, there are two ways. And um, in other words, you can actually create multiple names that point to the same file. There are two ways to do this. One is by creating a hard link to the file or by creating a soft link. Soft link sometimes is called a symbolic link. So each one has a disadvantage and disadvantage. So we have this reference like hard link or soft, soft link. Or in other words, it's called what? In other words, you can get it as symbolic, symbolic link. You see, in other words, you can get that as important link. So how do we create the ad links? First of all, every file starts with a single ad link from its initial name to the data on the file systems. And when you create a new ad link to a file, you create another name that points to that same data. So the new ad link acts exactly like the original file name. Once created, you cannot tell the difference between the new ad link and the original name of the file. And then on the other side, the soft links. Of course, we have some limitations of, of the ad link because ad links have some limitations. Ad links can only be used with the regular files. You cannot use um, ln command to create ad link to a directory or special file. Now, let's create. <clears throat> so we have this. <clears throat> so for me to create a ad link, I need to use ln and then let me give, let's say, had a link, and then let's say book three, and then let's say book three. Press enter. Uh, okay, let's say things on the other side. Uh, let me try book book three. So add link not allowed for directory. Oh yeah, these are these are text files. First of all, let me have it as, um, okay. It's only attached to text files, so there's no directories. So let me touch, uh, let's say uh, text one. Then let me touch text two. So ls, now let me remove uh, rm hyphen rf. Let's say book three, book four. So ls, yeah, exactly. So this is what I wanted. Now we have these two files. So I want to create a hard link on text one. So for this add link, I'll just use ln 
And then let's say, okay, let's try which was starts first. And then let's say text one, and then text to one. What, what, okay, which one? Probably the name has to come first. Text one, yes. So it means that the original file has to come first. The name of the original file has to come first, then followed by the name of the ad link. Now, if I ls, now you can see that we have what? We have the ad link here. We have the, we have the ad link here. So we have the text one here. Now let's see what happens if I get rid of text one. Will I still have the ad link text one? RM text one. LS, now you can see that we still have what? We still have the ad link. Now come to the soft link. It's actually the same way, but this time around you are only adding hyphen S. So we can talk about soft uh, text two. Of course, it will come here as text two. So what we've done here is, this is the command to come up with our, a soft link. So if I come to LS, you can see that now we have what? We have soft text two. So it's actually the same thing. It's more of like a security feature because the same information contained on the soft link here is exactly the same as on text two. So this is just like a simple way of coming up with a what? Coming up with both the soft link and the ad link. And this automatically takes us to the next chapter, uh, which is about um, creating, uh, viewing, see, creating, viewing, and editing text files. So this one is actually like a simple uh, part uh, because when creating, viewing, and editing text files from the command line output or in a text editor, it is very simple. The objectives is to save command output or errors to a file with shell redirection and process command output through multiple command line programs pipes. So for this case, I'm going to take you through like a simple step on how you can create, how you can view, and again, how you can edit text files. And then from there, I can also introduce you to something called the bash script. Now, so come back to this part. Now at this point, um, we have different text editors. For example, we have the VI. VI is a text editor. So if you want to create a text editor or a text file, you just use VI. So there are so many ways. You can either directly uh, come up with a text file um, by using the VI or by creating directly. So I can take you through, um, okay, let me just remove everything. Um, okay. So here it is empty. So first of all, we can touch, let's say, uh, let's say continent. I want a text file called continent. So if we are less, you can see that we have continent. So how do I insert? How do I insert some values into continent? So here we can just use VI and then say continent, VI continent. This is a creating. So press enter. You see, it takes us to this part. Now, this is an area which is blank. So you are required to insert some values. How do you insert some values? So you have the first step is for you to press I. Press I. So if you press I, okay. If you press I, let's say it will give you that space. And then you can say, I want, because it's about continents, I need to, to put, let's say, um, Africa, say put uh, Europe, put, uh, let's say, USA, um, 
let's say USA. Okay. So we have the USA. And then you can say, um, okay, let me add like China. So you have these continents. Now, after typing or pressing I, it will give you an option of insert. Then if you want to get out or to save your details, you have to press escape and then put full colon. You see where the full colon is coming down there and then put W that is for write and then quit and then put an exclamation mark and then press enter. That is a simple way of doing what? Creating a text file. Creating a text, a text file. So how do you view it? So already we've actually created by using touch. We've actually edited by using VI and then we need to view. So how do we view? So to view a text file, I need to just use what? Cut and then say continent. Cut is a command used to list the contents of a text file. When you press enter, you can see that we have Africa, Europe, USA, China. And the same thing goes. I can also have, let's say, book, VI book. Press I. So if you press I, then it will have, let's say, maths, uh, keys, uh, let's say, English, and then let's say, geology, uh, geology, and then press escape, and then put full colon. WQ and then exclamation mark and then press enter. For you to view, you can say cut book. You see, we have maths, Kiswahili, English, and geology. So this is just like a simple uh, part, the simple part on how to create a text file using, using VI. Now, so probably there's something else is about now using something called the bash scripting. I just want to show you how to use the bash scripting in a simple, in a simple way. So bash, bash scripting is actually a chapter or is a topic on its own. So you have to get to know more about bash scripting or scripting language, but I'm going to show you. So if you want to create a scripting language, you just use VI and then say, I want, um, let's call it load.sh, sh for scripting. Press enter, then press I. And then for this case, we have something called the shebang. This one is a rule. You have to type that, type that, forward slash, say bin, forward slash, say bash, and then press enter. That means you're moving to the second next line. This is how you will always be required to start a bash script. Then you can type, let's say, echo. I want to echo something here. Let's say, welcome to bash scripting language. Bash scripting. Okay, sorry for that. Sorry for that. Okay, sometimes it brings some issues. Okay, let's say, so, okay, let me just have like that. Then coming uh, here, Oh, what is happening here? Okay. Okay, let me just quit. And then come back again, load, then I. So let me put hash that for slash bash, and then say, echo um, that, sorry for that, and then 
let's say um, welcome. Okay, I don't know what's happening here. Just a minute. Q. Okay, just loading it again. And then Ash. Uh, that. Bin. Bash. And then let's say echo. And then welcome to Bash scripting. And then we say ls. So we need to ls, especially when it goes to that. And then we can say this. Uh, okay. Um, can say echo. This is complete listing of directory. So I'm just putting random uh, information there. And then from there, I need to quit. So for this case, I need to save. So you can see that I've actually started with what? This particular line. If you want to start with the bash scripting language, you have to start with that. It's actually called the Shiba. So echo, welcome to bash scripting, ls echo, this is complete listening directories. So if I press enter, now it means that we have. So if I say load, now you can see we have what? We have echo, welcome to bash scripting. But this is not exactly way on how you can, you can run a script language. So if you want to script file, then put forwards uh, dot. And of course, we need to give some permissions. So ensure that you give save mode then plus execute and they say load.sh. These are permissions, giving out permissions. Then from there, um, you can now come back and say um, dot forward slash and then say load. So this time round, I'm executing a, a scripting language or scripting file. So if I press enter, now you can say that welcome to bash scripting book continent load.sh this is complete listing of directories now it depends where you are doing what where you are executing from so this is just like a simple way of writing a scripting a scripting language this is just a simple way of writing scripting language now, so uh, for this particular part, um, we're going to uh, end here for this session, and then we will pick from there on the second session, which is actually managing local users, managing local users and groups. Managing local users and groups. So thank you and see you in the next uh, video.